Welcome to Spoiler Peace Theater, the podcast that doesn't give a shit about spoilers. We just want to talk about the movies. My name is Evan Crean. My pronouns are he, him. I am co-chair of the Boston Online Film Critics Association and co-author of your 80s movie guide to better living. My name is Megan Kearns. My pronouns are she, her. I write film reviews for Edge Media Network. I, too, am a member of the Boston Online Film Critics Association, and I'm a member of Gallica, the Society of LGBTQ Entertainment Critics. And my name is Dave Riedel. I write for the Chicago Reader. I'm also a member of the Boston Online Film Critics Association, and my pronouns are he, him. And on this week's show, we have two movies we're going to be talking about. But before we get to those, I want to mention that over on our Patreon this week, we are talking about the 1996 film From Dust Till Dawn. Woo, woo, woo! Yeah. Yeah, woo. Yeah. <laughs> Very fun conversation revisiting that. So if you're a patron, go check that out. And if you're not, please consider joining. For five bucks a month, you get access to exclusive audio. We do exclusive episodes for our patrons every week where we talk about movies uh older films primarily uh sometimes new films but we also do polls you can vote on and uh it's a lot of fun and while i'm at it i want to say uh thank you to our sponsor piece patron heather Sachs. thank you heather thanks heather thanks heather and so on this week's show as i mentioned we have two movies we're gonna be talking about uh shortcomings which is the directorial debut of uh randall park and we're going to be talking about what comes around. And we're going to start with what comes around, which is a thriller. It's directed by Amy Redford. It's written by Scott Organ. It stars Summer Phoenix, Grace Van Dien, Kyle Gallner, Jesse Garcia. It's kind of funny. It was like watching this and I was like, where do I know that guy from? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, we just watched Flaming Hot. The flavor guy. Okay. Yeah. Yes. The Flaming Hot. <laughs> He's also in The Mother with J-Lo. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. He was in that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Busy guy a busy, I was just going to say, he's having a busy year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the, the plot summary, here's our IMDb plot summary for what comes around. In this immersive thriller directed by Amy Redford, a young love affair becomes a menacing game of cat and mouse. Nothing and no one are as they seem. That's a terrible plot summary. <laughs> yeah, there's no cat and mouse in this fucking movie. There is no, no. cat and mouse. It, zero cat, movie, zero mouse. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I also wouldn't call this a thriller. Well, yeah, I was going to say this movie reminded me in a lot of ways of the lesson from a couple weeks ago. Oh, no, I knew you were going to compare it to the lesson. And that's an insult <laughs> to the lesson. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> And it's not, yeah, I, and it's not thrillerness. I hesitate. No, to, but that's true. It's not yeah. a thriller. I hesitate right. to uh, to defend the lesson, but yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. Neither one is really a thriller. Yeah, no, not really a thriller. Uh, so okay, so just to delve a little bit deeper, um, so we've got Summer Phoenix who is playing, or no, a Grace Van Dien who's. What was the main character's name? Is it Anna? It's Anna. It's Anna. Yeah, yes, I was Anna. like, wait, Beth is not the main character. Beth is the mother. Well, character. she kind of becomes uh, the main character. Right. She does. Right. So Grace Van Dien is Anna, and she we meet her in the beginning. She's talking to this guy uh, like over FaceTime about Emily Dickinson, and we know that it's like a secretive kind of thing because he's older. Uh, and so she's kind of like hiding this relationship from her mom and her friends. And... The guy, Eric, who's played by Kyle Gallner, he uh, decides to show up at her house and visit her on her <laughs> birthday, which is just fucking creepy as hell. And he does that like bashful like, oh, I'm so sorry if this is weird. I didn't mean I just really like you. Um, and so, yeah, then they like hook up and there's this awkward situation where he's like in her house while her parents are home on her birthday and she's like, just stay here. Wait for me to come home. And he's like, fuck that. I'm not staying here. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> he leaves. Comes and back. birthday late. cake. <laughs> he, does leave, he does eat the <laughs> vegan birthday cake, which apparently was not good. I don't know. She made a face when she ate it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So he comes back later and then, you know, Anna introduces him to her, her mom and her mom's fiance. 
and uh it's awkward the mom clearly knows him they get into an argument she's like get the fuck out of my house and then this makes anna want to see him even more and then it's revealed that uh this guy's real name is jesse and he was a student of her mom's and they had an inappropriate relationship which at first is made to seem like oh jesse slash eric is you know lying about the nature of their relationship and then you find out later they actually did have sex <laughs> and she yeah it's not funny it's just the plot it's absurd anyway sorry no, yeah. please continue <laughs> please no continue. it's totally <laughs> this um, fucking movie <laughs> <laughs> right and then you know you, she got she she gaslit him and and lied and and you know basically you know he kind of wrecked his life because you know no one believed him and he's like out for revenge i guess or out to get her <laughs> to admit what she did and though so he's like seducing the daughter as a way to like fuck with her and all right. What what else? What else is important to mention? Anything? Mm. He records her. Yeah. Yeah. He records her. Although when when the daughter's like, you should forgive her. Uh, he gives the he gives the recorder back, but he clearly takes the SD card out of the recorder when he gives it back. So I'm like, oh, he still he? has the recording. Oh, oh I didn't. I thought it was that. fairly obvious that he was taking the SD card out when he gave the recorder. Oh, back. I didn't see oh. that he took the SD card out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely not going to go back and watch and find out. Yeah. Fuck no. And then so <laughs> so then yeah, he's supposed to run away with the daughter and then he ditches her and says I'll see you in a bit, which is what she had the, the mother had said to him after the whole affair. And uh so then the mother and daughter awkwardly have to go to the mother's engagement party and that's where the movie ends. It's them like awkwardly sitting in the car and then being like, "Okay, I guess we Gotta go and deal with this now and, you know, <laughs> having been through this super awkward situation. Uh, and the daughter being super pissed at mom and being like, fix your hair. It's all a mess. Yeah. This is yeah. your party. Man. This is your party, mom. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Is that thrown in start? there just to be like, yes, yeah, she is I would, 17? I, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, let's let's hear it, Megan. You're you're okay. amped up. Let's. let's I do am it. amped up. So before we before we started recording, I almost said something, and this is what I was gonna say. This I feel like, although it might not be, I feel like this is gonna be a spicy episode because I am pissed. This movie pissed me the fuck off. This movie is <laughs> stupid. I was annoyed. It was predictable, and you know, because Dave, you always say you you know what's coming, yeah. and I'm always like defending movies, like oh, just because you know what's coming doesn't mean it's a bad movie, or doesn't mean mm-hmm. that it detracts. It's the whole point of spoiler piece. We talk about the spoilers because it's just a good movie. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Well, this movie was trash, and the acting <laughs> is a abysmal i think it's the, so bad it's so fucking bad grace van dean is terrible summer phoenix is awful, awful oh my god the only one who gets out unscathed i think is kyle gallner because yes. he's made a career of playing a, this part though yes yes he has but he's a really good actor and i like him and i like him whenever i see him jesse garcia is fine he's fine yeah. like he he's not bad he's not a casualty of this he's just kind of there but he doesn't oh get my, enough to do to be good no, or bad right 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 like. totally but kyle gallner is good but watch him in another movie don't watch this because this movie is so awful it's badly edited i don't like the way it's shot i think the acting is atrocious the writing is atrocious these characters are not characters and you know there is sort of possibly an interesting story here but you know Mm -hmm. what really turned me off this movie right from the start is that i was 17 dating a 23 year old and granted kyle gallner is a lot older in this movie than anna is but I was dating a 23 year old and which, you know, was not legal when I was doing it in the state I was living in. And I will tell you when my mother found out about that, my mother's reaction wasn't, oh, let's let him inside and I'm wildly uncomfortable, but we're going to make this work. No, my mother was like, I want to have this guy arrested. Like, it was like, this is not <laughs> happening. Now, granted, I was rebellious and I did, I dated him anyway, because that's, you know, that's not a surprise. But the fact that the mother, mm-hmm. until she meets him, is so like, this is not good, but she's kind of sort of weirdly calm about it. I'm like, no, this does not feel realistic in any way, shape, 
or form. And combine that with the shitty acting and the bad writing, it, it's a disaster. It's just, it's awful. And, you know, I will say to the film's credit, at least Anna, when Eric shows up unannounced, at least she's like, uh, that was creepy. Like, thankfully, she calls him out. Mm -hmm. But then she, like, hangs out with him and fucks him. And I'm just like, oh, yeah. like, what is happening after here? The mom, and after the mom tells her what actually happened, yes! she's like, I'm going to reach back out to him. Right. Why? And then she <laughs> wants to leave with him and move in with him. Like, what? I'm sorry. If I found out that I had had sex with someone my mother had had sex with or had even an inappropriate relationship with because the mother denies they had sex, I would be revolted and want to vomit. Like, it, it, none of it makes sense. None of it feels real. And I'm sorry. Grace Van Dien is 26, 27. She does not feel like a teenager. And I don't no, like 20-year-olds. No, she 20 doesn't look olds, like a teenager. She doesn't none look like one. She doesn't really act do. like one. No. But, like, I know 20 five-year-olds play teens all the time but you have to like channel being a teen being you know petulant or being moody or whatever just think maggie grace and, and taken <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes, she was what yes. like 30 playing a teenager she was yes. almost 30 she's at least 27 <laughs> yeah totally totally but like it just none of this felt authentic and I, I, this movie just pissed me off because there is there is something worth exploring as mm -hmm. far as you know, power dynamics in age differences and how yep. men can be very predatory towards younger women and all of that. And, you know, there's even a, a story about the fact of a teachers, you know, creepy older women teachers having inappropriate relationships with the, with their male students. Mm -hmm. But this movie is not that movie. and This movie is not that deep and it's not thrilling. And it's just no, it's no good. Ah, what a waste of time. <laughs> uh, yeah this movie is a big <laughs> fucking hot pile of dog shit it's so <laughs> this movie is so bad that uh, and unfortunately it's not like a so bad it's good movie it's just as right. as, it's just as huey lewis would right. say sometimes bad is bad and <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's true Grace Van Dien, I, I thought, I was just like, I can't believe that this is the performance she's giving. Now, I've never seen Stranger Things or anything like that, so I've never seen any of her work before, but I'm like, watching this being like, this is, she's, you're terrible, what the fuck? And then Summer Phoenix shows up, and I'm just like, <gasps> oh. how can you be a part of the same family as your brothers? I mean, my God, just un unbelievably shit performance i, I mean think the worst performance in the movie yeah oh I think far and away i think her performance is the worst yeah now absolutely in her defense she is working from one of the world's worst scripts so there is that <laughs> but you can also sell bad dialogue if you feel like it's like it did none of the dialogue felt natural coming out of almost any of the characters mouths yeah right well, there's that. Like it didn't sound natural. Yeah. It sound it was sounded stupid, and it sounded stupid. <laughs> well, yeah. There's, do you remember when? Um, what was the fiance's name again? Was it Tim? Uh, Tim. When he was yes. like threatening Kyle Gallner with like either having him arrested or you just turn like yes. That whole thing was like I I know what he's saying because I understand you know right what the situation is, but the way he's saying it literally doesn't make sense. It, you know, it's like, no, no, I, I no. mean, oh, good Lord. Good <laughs> Lord. This is one of those movies where it also, by the way, resembles a Lifetime movie. I, I mean, just with <laughs> with the melodrama and it looks like a Lifetime movie. Oh, it feels like a Lifetime movie. I thought movie. it was going to be more like the boy next door. And I thought we would maybe get like some salaciousness and the creepy stalker. <laughs> thing <laughs> no <laughs> nope kind of like an erotic 90s erotic 80s throwback sort of the way the boy next door is <laughs> yeah and it doesn't yeah kind of yeah and and the ending is such a like like who gives a shit you know it's yeah it just fizzles out it just yeah. ends he's just like yeah okay i got what i needed i'll leave and yeah, why don't you go fuck yourself okay like this is it, this is exceptionally poor it's i i just can't even believe that anybody read this script and thought, oh, I want to make this, and then made it and was like, we totally need to get this movie in theaters. I, I just... 
You know, I don't like to, sh- uh-huh. I mean, I do shit on movies all the time, but I, I don't really, I try anyway, not to just say that the filmmakers are stupid or out to lunch or things right. like that. But this is kind of like a mass, it's kind of like they were hypnotized to not realize <laughs> how shitty their movie was. <laughs> like every morning... <laughs> One of the producers was like, did you bring the crystal ball? Okay, everybody look into it while we spin it. Now you're, you know, I'd, I, I meant the watch, not crystal ball. But like, <laughs> I, I just don't even understand. I just don't understand. Uh, I mean, Evan, you compared it to the lesson. At least the lesson, it's like, there are, there are more than germs of good ideas there. You know? Yes. It's just the execution is... Dull is a good way to put it. Yeah. Um, well, the, the the execution of the lesson, yeah. It's it, but also, <laughs> I think the acting was really great in the lesson. Yes. But the story wasn't there. Right. And this, I felt like there was, like you said, Megan, there was something here. Yes. That could have been good, but it wasn't. And it was all of the things that you said. The both of you said the <laughs> acting is bad. The the doesn't look good. It's not mm-hmm. edited. It's edited in a way that's very slow. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> the writing is bad. The writing is bad. The performances are bad. Kyle Gallner is the only one that's good in it. Oh, I and love Kyle Gallner. He's I feel great. like he is totally believable. And I, it's yes. funny because even before we find out that the mom was lying and they did have sex, I believed him. Me too. I yeah. believed his character Me too. and Me was too. like, she is definitely lying about yep. this. Yep. That's how good his performance was. He Agreed. convinced me that he was in the right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, Kyle Gallner is great. I need to see more of his films because he's always so good and he's great here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But also just, you know, the, the Anna character, I just don't understand <laughs> how anybody could be that stupid. Like, <laughs> it's kind of like you were saying, Megan, if you found out that like some dude you were dating had a relationship with your mother, you'd be like, fuck this. Yeah. And it's yeah, like, I'm out. I'm done. I just don't understand the whole, like, well, you know, my mom boned him, but we're two different women, whatever, <laughs> you know, like I, I love him. We're in love. Yeah. It's really just, <laughs> it, it makes me like, it makes me question her character's sanity in a way. Like I don't, right. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's just so misguided. And there's no way, uh, you know, I was privy to some of those Facebook, FaceTime conversations, too. I didn't really see anything that made me go, oh, this guy, he's so fucking gaga. I gotta (laughs) fucking get in his pants. I mean, he's talking about poetry, man. Exactly. Exactly. And of all the poets you could talk about, you're talking about Emily Dickinson. I mean, I understand. She's great. Whatever. But like, can we can we pick somebody that's not just like the first poet you go to in a story? Right. You know? Right. Right. No, I I agree. It would have been. I think it would have sold it a bit more if it was a more obscure poet or a different poet. Yeah. Or even like, some, yeah, wasn't somebody just the more fact- avant garde or dynamic. Yes. I guess. Yeah, yeah, like not just like, oh, you know, <laughs> Poetry 101, Emily Dick. I mean, and yes, she is great. But yeah, it would have been nice if it was somebody a little bit, a little bit different. Like that would have been more striking. Like, oh, this guy knows my favorite, uh, you know, more obscure poet. And But right. I will say the fact, and, and I will say to the film's credit, at least it has this, I mean, it's kind of obvious, but it has that one scene where her friend is like, oh, I see where you went for somebody older because the boys are so like, boys you know they, they're just they're like they're in fifth grade but taller you know and that can be really again as someone who was a teen who dated older people it can be really alluring just like oh this person has their own place oh this person knows these mm-hmm. things it's so superficial and <laughs> stupid but that can be an allure so i right. totally get that i will buy in the film the fact that he was like spouting poetry to her oh yeah i totally buy that yeah. that she would be eating that shit up oh for sure and the thing is too it's like it whenever we see the teens in the movie like they're o- they're almost exclusively just kicking a soccer ball around so of <laughs> yes. course of course they're going to be more interested in the older guy who's like talking about poetry because he's not just right. kicking a soccer ball around in a circle <laughs> Like they do every day, apparently, according to this movie. I know. Is there There's nothing, nothing else? else going on? 
Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. When a movie is bad, I zone in on stuff like this. The other thing that I zoned in on is that in the first like several conversations we see her having with him, there's no prior text message history. Yes. So like, I yeah, noticed she's that. Like, that deleting, she's either deleting the messages or the movie was so dumb it didn't even think right. that there should be a previous conversation until later in the movie when you do see right. there's an established line of texting. But then I was thinking, like, I thought the exact same thing. I'm like, is she deleting this so then no one will see? Because she is kind of, like, private and secretive about her phone. I mean, and I don't blame... Honestly, I don't blame her. I would be weird about my phone, too, just in general. Don't look at my phone. Don't touch my phone. But, yeah, I thought that, too. And I'm like, mm, this this is weird. Yeah, I noticed that, too. This is a real bummer. Because <laughs> it was like, <laughs> you know, of all the things you could get right, you just need a line of dialogue where she says that... You know, well, my mom doesn't know it, can't find anything by looking at my phone because I've been deleting our text messages. Right. There's that. Or, uh, you know, yep, yep, yep. or you, you know, spend the extra two bucks to buy the CGI screen where their, you know, conversation exists in perpetuity in text mm-hmm. land. Oh, my God. So awful. Chat GPT <laughs> could write it for you. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah. about that but <laughs> you know you said dave that you and i wanted to circle back to this you had said that you don't even though you do shit on movies frequently you don't like doing it because you know and i i i agree with you like there's a lot of hard work that goes into making a film yep. you know this is somebody this could be somebody's dream project you know a lot of you know blood sweat and tears went into making even even the most lazy films are hard work but it, it so I take no pleasure in, in not being able to stand this movie. Oh man, mm. it's just tragic. It's I know. Just, I mean, the thing is, uh, it's so awful that I'm not even angry about it. I'm just perplexed. <laughs> I just don't understand. Now that I've got it, you know? Yeah, now that I've gotten the anger out, now I'm just like, yeah, now I feel bad. <laughs> like, what mm-hmm. happened? What went awry? <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Well, on that note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I don't think I have too much more. I feel like I've gotten vented all of my frustrations pretty much about this movie. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to, I'm just going to keep kind of sighing. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Shall we move on to shortcomings? Yes. Shall we discuss its shortcomings? Oh. Oh, but I'm bumped. But don't. So, as I mentioned at the top of the show, Shortcomings is uh, actor Randall Park's directorial debut. It's uh, written by Adrian Tomine, which is also based on a novel, I think, by Adrian Tomine. Graphic novel. Oh, yeah, graphic novel. Yeah. Graphic novel. And um, our, our one... Our, one sentence IMDb plot summary. A trio of young Bay Area urbanites, Ben Tanaka, Miko Hayashi, and Alice Kim, as they navigate a range of interpersonal relationships traversing the country in search of the ideal connection. That's an awkward yeah. summary. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's an awkward sentence, although I feel like Ben is the main character of the movie and we do see, you know, a little bit of what's going on with Alice and Miko, the movie kind of revolves around him. Yeah. Uh, and Yeah, he's definitely, it's his show. Yeah. I mean, and so let's see, he's a grump. He's a total grump. Uh, he's been dating Miko for what, six or seven Long years? Long time. Mm-hmm. Their yeah. relationship is on the rocks. And she says she's going to, you know, move to New York to take some internship for a few months and take a break. And uh, so then he's, you know, out th- putting himself out there trying to date. And there's this whole, you know, piece uh, that he gets into a fight with Miko before she leaves. She finds porn on his computer and he's only watching porn with white women and he cl- is always ogling white women. So that's like a point of contention slash a, a joke. Like Alice for Alice is like making fun of him about that. <clears throat> So he tries dating a little bit and Alice is, what's she got going on? She gets kicked out of school and then she goes to New York too and she meets uh, Meredith and they fall in love and have a thing going on. And then so Ben decides to go visit her and then he decides to go track Miko down and it turns out that she lied. She didn't have an internship. She's just in a a new relationship with this guy. 
uh, played by Timothy Simons, uh, and then you know they get into a fight and what else? <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you forgot to mention that Ben is one of the least likable characters ever put on oh screen. Oh my god! Yes, yeah, he's. Oh he's a my real god, he's a-hole. fucking insufferable. He's yeah. I yeah. mean, and we we say this all like, the time. Wow. Yeah, Megan, well, we say this all the time, but I think, Megan, you might say it more than I do. It's like, characters don't have to be likable to be good characters. Yes. But this guy yes. is just a piece of garbage. He just sucks. Oh. He does. And it's, he does And suck. it's a good enough performance to make me, like, hate the character even more. Yes. Because it's yes. like... Yes, yes, yes. You know, so it's well done, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Mission accomplished. It's just I like, hate this guy. He's so insufferable. I mean, look... I don't really think the phrase kicker in the pussy is all that funny, but when you find out, no, when you find out that, um, the girl Meredith, uh, um, what's his friend's name? Alice. Alice. When you find out that Alice's girlfriend, Meredith is completely revolted by that and doesn't understand your sense of humor. Why would you say it again later? Like, right. What kind of asshole are you? I mean, the kind of asshole that is trying to break up their relationship. So Alice moves back mm-hmm. and, and stays with him in a state of arrested development, which at least he has, he recognizes it by the end of the movie that that's what he's doing and admits it. <laughs> but, but at that point, I didn't even care, <laughs> you know? Right. It's just yeah. like, unfortunately, I mean, I think a lot of this is well done. I think, I I feel like, I don't know if it's a generational thing. I can't believe I'm going to fucking say this. I feel like characters in movies that are in their mid to late twenties now, it's just like, grow the fuck up, would you? Um, but <laughs> also, um yeah, he's just like he's just a dick. I mean, there's no He is. Yeah. I, I get the feeling that he would be the kind of character who is miserable no matter what he was doing. So Exactly. It doesn't matter that he didn't get to like make his movie or or finish it or whatever he's you know. Um, yeah, he sucks all the joy out of every situation, all yeah. the fun, and he's grumpy all the time, and he hates himself, and he's got a lot of issues that he is clearly needs to work through. Yeah, and just take the... <laughs> yeah, he needs some therapy. Yeah, I mean, take, for example, I don't remember her name either, the woman that he hires to work at the movie theater, and Autumn, um, and they're, you know, back at her place, and they're about to hook up, and she shows him this, you know, piece of art she's working on, which is, she's photographing her own urine in the toilet first thing in the morning. Hey, I, I don't know. I don't know if that qualifies as art or not. I'm, you know, but I think if you're trying to have sex with someone about the last thing you want to do is make fun of their fucking art to their face. You know, mm-hmm. I just, I, I, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah. I mean, maybe don't be cruel in general. Yeah, he's, you know, he's cruel. Anyone. That's the thing. Yeah. And it, right. And he's so misanthropic. And he, like you said, Evan, he hates himself. And he's just spewing that cruelty and hatred inwards, but also to everyone else. And I, like you, Dave, I, I thought I agreed. I think this is a well-made movie, arguably, but I had such a fucking problem watching this movie because I'm like, I hate him. Yeah. I can't mm-hmm. stand him. I don't. And, you know, and the thing of it is, is like, I love Young Adult. I think Charlize Theron and Young Adult is amazing. I think that movie Not is the great. Character. It is such a great movie. Right. And she's a terrible person and she doesn't learn a goddamn thing. And I love that movie. And I'm watching this and I'm trying to give it this, like him the same bandwidth. And I'm and Justin H. Min is great. He's so good in After Yang. He's so good here. But I'm like, you know what? I don't think this is a tight enough script that gives him maybe enough or makes me care about him enough or care about his journey enough. And he's a stalker and it's awful. And he's he's an mm-hmm. asshole to his best friend. He's an asshole to his girlfriend and ex. He's an asshole to all the girls he wants to date. He's an asshole mm-hmm. to his, his coworkers who are dudes. He's just fucking horrible. And it made it such a slog to follow him on this journey that when you finally mm-hmm. do get to the end and he kind of has this epiphany and he kind of realizes like, oh, the problem is me all along. Like, you know, it's me. Hi, the problem is me. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of like with you, Dave, it's like, it's, it was a sweet ending and I'm like, oh, it's a really good ending, but I'm all, I almost didn't care. Cause I'm like, yeah, it, it was just so painful to watch yeah. the whole time Agreed. until we get to the good ending. 
Yeah, it's a it's a real slog of a movie. He's just yeah. such an unlikable protagonist to an extreme degree, and but w- well acted, extremely yes. well acted. I think. Um, totally. I, I I really wish I liked this movie more. I love Two. Randall Park as an actor, and so I was hoping he would have something really interesting to say in a first. <laughs> you know feature but i just i feel like this movie to me was just so average indie quirky uninteresting like title cardy oh that title card title cardy you know (laughs) it just was not i just didn't think it was interesting at all or telling an interesting story but i agree with you that the end was i thought the end was good and Mm -hmm. uh after we finished it uh shauna said to me that like you know, it's funny because it's a happy ending and everyone else is happy and then he's left with nothing, but it's still a happy ending. And I couldn't agree more, yep. you know, like it, it actually yep. sells you on the fact that he's alone, broke, no job, no apartment, but it is actually happy ending because everyone around him is happy. And he's also kind of like hitting a reset button going, OK, I've got some shit I need to work on. <laughs> Totally. I will say what almost almost redeems him is when he and you had you had started to touch on this or you did touch on this, Evan, when he when Meredith is like, he's trying to sabotage our relationship just so you'll, you know, go back with him and you can be miserable together. And she's like, no, he wouldn't do that. And it's so heartbreaking that she's still defending him. And Mm -hmm. then Ben comes in and he's like, no, she's actually 100 percent right. That's what I'm doing. And I love that he not only admits that, but he apologizes to Meredith. He's like, he's like, you very well might not have liked me otherwise if you met me, but I'm so sorry you had to meet me at the absolute worst time in my life. And, you know, and that's really true. And what I wish we had gotten earlier was a snippet of that kind of pathos, because then I feel like if we'd gotten just a hint of that earlier and like. I, and like I know it's coming or I feel like it's probably coming, but I shouldn't have to do such heavy lifting as an audience. Like I feel like that should kind of be in there sooner that he's having such a hard time and struggling. So mm-hmm. but I will say at least it happens at the end. And I also really love the subversion of kind of like the rom-com trope where he's like, I'm going to do like at first, you know, Alice is like, oh, are you going to go see Miko again? And he's like, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do it. And then he leaves a note like, I got to go see Miko. And he's like running because he's got to mm-hmm. he's got his luggage with him because he's got to then later catch his flight. And I love that he sees her happy in the cafe window with her new boyfriend. And he's like, no, I'm just going to let her be. And she's happy. And I don't want to fuck that up any any further than I already have. And I like that. That shows a level of maturity. So the ending, I think, is really, really good. I just wish Mm -hmm. we kind of got a little bit more like crumbs of that along the way. I will say, though, I think there is something interesting that Randall Park is saying in this film or the screenwriter was saying in this film. I, I do think the opening where it's very clearly where the cameo from um, Stephanie Hsu and it's very clearly a take on Crazy Rich Asians that's being screened <laughs> yeah. and everyone loves it and he fucking hates it and he has that argument with Miko and he's like, well, who cares if it's just representation but it's it's not good art and I think there's, you know, there's a real argument to be had there like does representation matter just for the sake of representation especially, you know, within communities of color especially in an Asian American community does, is that enough or do we need more? And I think that the film is touching on that. I don't know if it does it enough or effectively, but at least it's raising that. And I think that that's a really powerful and valuable argument and discussion to have. Absolutely. And I think it circles back to that quite effectively when Ben is on that flight and the woman in front of him is crying as yes. she's yeah. the ending of the movie. Yes. Cause he realizes I I am a huge asshole about this. <laughs> like, you know, this representate I, I think we see the character realizing that representation is important and maybe I shouldn't be shitting on things all the yeah. time because it does matter to people and it does make a difference, even if I'm not personally a fan of it. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's it's I just think of Chris Rock. It's not for you. That's fine. It's not for you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. With certain terrible conservative men shitting all over Barbie and it's like well it should be for you because it is about men too but maybe it's not for you and that's okay yeah. not everything has to be and for also you. thank yes. you for going out of your way to not get it but anyway um, 
Exactly. It's a great litmus test. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah I, um, I mean, I liked the performances in this. Um, I thought one of the most affecting, uh, effective things in it was uh, Ben's relationship with Sasha, her name. Um, yes. Uh, yeah. I thought that their breakup was, was uh, poignant is not the right word, but let's just say poignant. How she's, Ooh. how one, it's kind of shitty of her, but at the same time, they didn't really establish what was going on between the two of them. And so when she turns around and says, you know, you can blame this on race (laughs) or she says something else she's like but what you're gonna realize is that the problem is just you and i'm like you know i'm glad i'm glad that a character in a movie said that because you know people need to be told that sometimes (laughs) yeah they need to be taken down a notch (laughs) that actually felt very social network to me with rooney mara oh yeah (laughs) i hadn't thought of that That, but you're right I was, I immediately was brought back to that and I was like, yes, this is great. So yeah, no, that was a really, really good scene. I, I liked mm-hmm. her, Debbie Ryan. I think she was great. Yeah. And, you know, you were talking about the performances, Dave. I also love Sonoya Mizuno. Love her, love her in anything and everything. And she's so good in the film that we saw, Dave, that hasn't come out yet. Am I okay? Mm-hmm. And she's so good in that. Yeah. And she's great here too. I loved Sherry Cola in this. Yes, I thought that one Sherry of the stronger Cola's aspects great. of the film was her performance and her chemistry with uh, with Justin H. Min. I, I mm-hmm. did feel like they were really best friends, and I love that she was always kind of giving him shit, even then that last voicemail she's giving yes. him shit. Like, <laughs> love, but tough love. And I love that aspect of the relationship, that she can be so real with him and cut down to the core about stuff. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. And it seems like their friendship is really important to him, too, because it seems like she's the only one who really can, you know, give him tough love and tell him the tough shit that maybe he doesn't want to hear or that no one else, mm-hmm. you know, will take the time or has the guts to tell him. You know, so I, I agree with you. She apparently hasn't told like him it. enough, though. <laughs> well, that is true. But, you know, it's yeah. interesting because there is a, there is something to be said with kind of negativity feeding negativity and she talks about how she's i don't think she calls herself a shitty person but she says something to the effect of how she's not a great person either mm. but this is her chance to be better in this relationship with Meredith because she loves her and she cares about her and she wants a fresh start too yeah. so i think there's something to be said about that like maybe she didn't tell him all the things she should have because she was kind of it was like this feedback loop of negativity totally. when they were together or something you know yeah. mm-hmm. or even just that she would say a lot of things to him in a joking kind of way yes. that would not really always communicate the severity of the situation to him. <laughs> right right yeah mm. he's kind of dense <laughs> yeah yeah kind of <laughs> <laughs> that might be an understatement by, by the way one of the most oh my god i can't remember her, the the girlfriend miko um, one of the most fascinating things I thought was when they were having their big breakup argument and she just starts laughing at him, you know, yes! at the end of it. And he's like, what? She's like, nah, it's not important. He's like, no, tell me. She's like, I just realized I never have to listen to this shit again. <laughs> and <laughs> great line. Having, having felt that about people before, um, I, I, it was like simultaneously, that is incredibly cruel, but at the same time, absolutely true. And you know what? He's been cruel to you the whole time. Just give, give him some hard truth, you know? Um, probably not the best person to give it to him because he's probably going to ignore it because <laughs> he's like, what does she fucking know? But, um, which is kind of what he does. But... <laughs> I don't know. I just, at first I was like, wow, that's mean. And I was like, but he's got a real point. She doesn't have to listen to that shit that's been making her miserable. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, after he's just railed against her, uh, you know, ragging on her about, you know, this, oh, you're dating some rich guy and the white guy and this and that. And, you know, it's like, it's not, he said plenty of like cruel things. Although mm-hmm. I did really think the interaction between him and Timothy Simons was quite funny when he was like, Timothy Simons was like in his like martial arts pose. He was like, 
<laughs> sorry, sorry, force of habit. Uh, I don't know. It just I felt like we got to know so much about that character and just how he was trying to interact with Ben and trying to like be a nice guy in a situation where it was just clearly Ben was on a war path. <laughs> yeah. What? Who, why do I know him? He's on Veep. Right. 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 Yep. That's it. That's not the last thing, but that's, that's what I know. I it. That's what I know him from. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> I did think that the whole thing when when uh, Alice and Ben went to the boutique to ask about you know why Miko was the model in these photos, I can't believe that the clerk told them all that. And by the way, right? why would the clerk know all that? Even even you know, right? I know it's the boutique, and there aren't a million of them. But at the same time, are you really going to hand out that information, pal? I don't know. Right. So that's very weird. Yeah. Hey, but congratulations to Randall Park for giving himself a really good joke <laughs> in the movie, in his one scene. <laughs> uh, or a, a good line, I should say. It's not really a joke. <clears throat> it's kind of a throwaway line that happens to be very funny. Anyway. Yeah, so, I mean, shortcom- shortcomings shortcomings are that its lead character are so unlikable you don't want to watch it. Which is, <laughs> which is a bummer. Because it's really well it done otherwise, you know? Um, mm-hmm. I think it's so funny because I thought I was going to be the one downer. <laughs> no, I, I felt that way from so the, funny. like, almost from the first time he opens his mouth. I was just like, yeah, me this too. guy is terrible, you know? <laughs> I, know. I was like, I don't want to know anything about him. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, and... I don't know when Mika's like giving him the cold shoulder before before she leaves for New York. It's just like, how can you be so dense that the way you've treated her is just like appalling? Yeah, <laughs> you know. Eh, anyway, <sighs> they can't. I know. I do kind of like that. You know, his immediate reaction is not like, oh, congratulations. It's like, you expect me to move to New York? I don't want to move to New York. What? You didn't tell me about the three months in New York. And, I love, and I'm thinking, I'm like, she didn't fucking ask you. And that's exactly mm-hmm. what she said. She's like, I wasn't asking you to come with me. Yeah. Like, can you blame her? But I will say, I do think it's interesting that Miko takes uh, responsibility at the end for not being more direct. Because I was also thinking that too. I was like, she lied yeah. and she was very deceptive and she was never really direct about what she wanted and her problems with him. So I like that, you know, she owns up to that. And I also like their, that breakup kind of confrontation because it felt so realistic. Yeah. Actually the breakup with Sasha too feels really realistic. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I will say, for such a terrible character, it is refreshing to see messy breakups because so often in film we see really nice, lovely, mature breakups. And I'm like, that's not realistic. Like, those are nice and they do happen sometimes in real life or maybe a lot for some people. But I'm sorry, I've seen some messy, m- messy, messy breakups. And I feel like we need to see those in film too. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> I just know I'm just thinking of like uh, the breakup in one of your favorite. I don't know if it's one of your favorite movies, but you've got mail. The the break. The <gasps> just, yes. Just. Oh, come on. <laughs> anyway, listen, I love you've got mail, but that breakup is absurd. <laughs> so any spray. What what did you guys think overall? I mean, is this this is kind of interesting because I know we always talk about our recommendations kind of at the end, but I, I feel like is a single character who is the lead is the sing, is this is he in every scene? I'm trying to think of that. No, I guess not. He's in almost every scene. Um, almost, yeah. Is is it enough that his character is so awful to like not recommend a movie? I mean, I don't. <laughs> I think in this case it yeah. is, but I don't. I it, that's not the only reason I wouldn't recommend it. I just feel like the rest of it, it was so meh to me that <laughs> super unlikable protagonist plus meh movie. It does not equal me want to recommend it. it it's interesting that you say that because I feel like 
this movie has a vibe like like we're coming back to the 90s like mid 90s you know new york centered indie film starring eric um the guy who was replaced by michael j fox eric stoltz <laughs> eric stoltz <laughs> you know eric stoltz i mean it feels like um i can't remember what the name of it is uh it might be one of Noah Baumbach's first movies. Um, I can't rem- but it, it feels like Naked in New York, which is not a Noah Baumbach movie, or or something like that in its tone. Uh, the way the characters interact with each other, which is not a compliment, but it also, you know, at least there's some, like, nostalgia that I have for it. <laughs> uh, anyway. I, w- I will say... I have complicated feelings about recommending it because personally, I never want to see this again. And I had an unpleasant experience watching, although the end is really, really great. And there are Mm -hmm. things that I think are great. And there's so many great performances. The the performances are great. That's great. But at the same time, I've seen a lot of glowing reviews for this. And I also think, you know, coming again, coming up on the topic of representation, especially because this film addresses it head on, you know, there's a lot of Asian American representation in this, especially behind the scenes and in the characters. And that's really important. And there's queer representation, you know, with Alice being a queer woman and having a happily ever after in her queer relationship. And that's great too. So for the Asian American representation and the queer representation and the fact that clearly the, the great acting and the vibe in New, in New York as well as in California. I don't know. I think there are people who will really dig this. But I, I feel like I would need to give like a caveat. Like, eh, yeah. the character so unlikable, you might not be able to deal. So I think your mileage may vary. This is another thing I have to say, which is such a, a side note. And I meant to bring it up when Davey were talking about um, Autumn looking at her. <laughs> Her art in the pee. Yeah. It is so weird to me to see Tavi Gevinson in acting roles. And I know she's been an actor for like 10 years now, but it's so bizarre because I started following her when she started doing her fashion blog like a million years ago when she was like 15. And then I followed her when she did Rookie Magazine. And so it's just weird to see her now acting on screen anyway. But I feel like she was kind of perfect for that role. And another side note, there there are references to other films in this. And I will say there's a kind of cute little wink and nod because the guy who one of the guys who is the 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 movie theater worker is also in the Spider-Man films. And he and the other guy who's in Cocaine Bear, who's also a TikToker, um, and he has this persona of like angry guy. Oh, the angry clerk. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scott exactly. Sice. Yeah. When they're. Yes, thank you. When they're arguing about films and Scott Sice is talking about how he loves like Celine Shiama and he loves like all he's like, I really love like Eric Romer. And he's talking about like all these like, you know, like foreign films and whatnot. And then he's like, no, you don't. You like blah, blah, blah. And then the other guy is talking about how uh, he loves Marvel movies. And that's kind of funny because he's in Spider-Man movies anyway. It was like a cute right, little wink yeah. and nod. I think, yeah, he does say something like, oh, the, the Spider-Man movies the yes, best or something like yes. that. Yes. And I was like, I see you. <laughs> I'm like, I see what you're doing. <laughs> so some cute touches. Yeah. Well, is there anything else we had to say about shortcomings? Nah, not this guy. Meaning all right there. so i feel like we kind of basically just said whether we would recommend <laughs> this movie or not <laughs> well dave didn't oh no i couldn't recommend it i i feel like <laughs> <laughs> i feel like you do megan it's just like look you know it's it's well made it's well acted but mm-hmm. you should know going in that the the lead performance is great but the character is an unrepentant <laughs> well now he's he is repentant actually is just at the very is just end. like yeah or 95 percent of this movie's runtime is a total ass wipe so <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah and like i always say there can be terrible terrible people who are riveting characters but I, yeah i don't know he, despite his performance and everything i don't know if he's riveting enough to yeah sit through the movie but anyway. right but there's other great stuff I feel like in some of those movies, at least the ter- the main character is terrible but charming. 
<laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> some yes. Way. Exactly. Exactly. Or some <laughs> kind of ben like a, is not charming right. at all. Or some kind of like badass or like fearless or you know yeah. something. But yeah, no, Ben is not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And none of us would recommend what comes around, would we? <laughs> No, uh, I would say you should watch it if you're really angry at yourself. But otherwise, you know, <laughs> if you're a masochist, yeah. like, I don't deserve to watch a good movie. I'll watch what comes around. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, that that wraps up another episode of Spoiler Feast Theater. I want to say a huge thank you to our editor, Otto Clammer. Otto, thank you for making us sound great week after week. Thanks, Otto. Thanks so much, Otto. You can find the show anywhere you get podcasts, but you can also find us over at our website, which is spoilerpiece.com. And while you're over at our website, you can definitely check out our merch. You can click on the merch tab and head over to our Tee Public store where you can go all kinds of cool Spoiler Piece merch. And uh, if you want to get in touch with us, you can send us an email. We're spoilerpiece at gmail.com. Or you can give us a call at 86221peace. You can leave us a voicemail. You can send us a text. Love hearing from listeners. Uh, tell us we're fucking idiots and what comes around <laughs> is a great movie. Or, uh, you know. Tell us why you agree with us about shortcomings. <laughs> 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 or just talk to us about other stuff. You can ask us all kinds of questions about movies. You can ask us food questions. I know it's been a while Ooh. since we've had a food conversation on the show, but we do have strong opinions about food. Yeah. So yes, also we do. Fun conversation. Uh, if you like the show, please rate and review us by going to ratethispodcast.com slash spoiler piece, and that will take you to your platform of choice. A five-star review would go a very long way for us. It helps more people uh, to know about the show. It gives us more cred in the world, and maybe someday it will give us enough uh, clout to get Rotten Tomatoes certified. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> And if you really, really like the show, please consider joining our Patreon. As I mentioned at the top of this week's show, that we talked about the 1996 film From Dust Till Dawn, which was a very fun conversation. And um, for five bucks a month, you can get access to weekly exclusive episodes and you can vote in polls. And it's uh, pretty awesome. <laughs> we, we thank you for your support, those of you who are already patrons. And uh, thanks for listening. My name is Evan Crean. I am co-chair of the Boston Online Film Critics Association and co-author of your 80s movie guide to better living. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd as Real Recon, and I just recently got on Threads and Blue Sky, so I guess you can find me there too. My name is Megan Kearns. I write film reviews for Edge Media Network. I too am a member of the Boston Online Film Critics Association and I'm a member of Gallica. You can follow me on Twitter and on Blue Sky at Opinion S World and on Instagram and Letterboxd at The Opinion S. And my name is Dave Riedel. I write for the Chicago Reader. I'm a member of the Boston Online Film Critics Association and I am on Instagram, Letterboxd, and Threads. Uh, I think I'm Dave C's Movies on all of those. So You are. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember if I did the threads thing for that account yet or not, but uh, if I haven't, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Too many accounts to keep track of. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, everyone. Bye.